Hi everyone, Doris Raymond here from The Way We Wore in Los Angeles. I know it's been a little while and I hope you are patient. We have had, um, I'm happy to say we've had an amazing year so far in the store with a ton of business and a lot of shopping and just keeping up with it has been a challenge. So um, unfortunately, finding the time to do the research and to actually do these episodes has fallen a little bit on the back burner, so I apologize. But it's good news, because <laughs> we're still standing. Anyway, um, I wanted to mention, all of you that have watched the episodes and are familiar with us, you know that we're here in, in California, and California has been a source of inspiration and also of manufacturers for decades, if not a full, more than a full century. And uh, obviously part of the reason for that is because of the weather, but the other obvious reason is because of Hollywood. And one of the uh, industries that was really uh, evolved here is the swimwear industry. So we've had many, uh, three actually, really vibrant swimwear companies that have been around for close to a century. One is Coal of California, the other is DeWeese Designs, and the other, of course, is Catalina. So we're going to start off with uh, Coal of California. It um, started off being primarily an underwear, uh, knit, knitwear underwear company. And uh, the son of the owner was an actor, and in 1925 his parents urged him to get into a more serious business. So he joined the company, and he felt that the designs were really boring, and he wanted to bring it to a place that was more uh, relatable to what was happening in California. And um, he knew because of the film industry that glamour and sexiness were th elements that would really help sell women's sw swimwear. So they started, um, started making swimwear in 1912 before he got involved, but he really zhuzhed it up a bit. And um, in 1925, he in introduced his first swimsuit which was said to be called the Prohibition Suit, or simply Hollywood. And it featured a little bit more skin. Still pretty conservative by today's standards, but it was definitely pushing the bar. Uh, in fact, in, in the 1950s, Olympic swimmer Esther Williams was one of their models slash spokespeople. And um, yeah, so it was, it was a very successful company. It has since been purchased numerous times and actually still exists to this very day under different parenting. We have just a few examples of these three California design companies and since I was talking about Coal of California, this wonderful romper, it's the Madras plaid and uh, it has obviously built in under, but it's short so it's a truly um, it's a romper play suit, and it's lined in this vibrant cobalt blue cotton, so it's very practical, sexy but demure. Then I'm going to go on to these mannequins, which are by Deweese Designs. They're actually, I purchased them together, so it was an ensemble, and you can see how flirty and playful this is. Um, I want to mention that DeWeese worked for a different company prior to starting her own business in uh, 1951. And she worked with some of the top designers prior to starting her own company. And um, a lot of her bathing suits or swimsuits were worn by pageant um, competitors in Miss America. She introduced the sweetheart ensemble, which was matching uh, um, women and men's swimwear, which is kind of fun, but I doubt that that would be very successful these days. Um, her early swimsuits were often decorated with fancy appliques and rhinestones, and in 61, she designed the official U.S. team swimsuits for the World Water Team Championships and also for the Olympics in 1960. Her label lasted until around 1984. 
Um, I personally love whatever Deweese uh, swimwear we get and have actually sold quite a few pieces to major museums. So she is in demand, as is California sportswear in general. So the last California swimwear company I mentioned is Catalina. Um, it's rare to find three pieces together after what is now, what, uh, 70 years? 65 or 70 years. It's this cropped top, kind of oversized, and with it comes this beautiful bikini top and ruched bottom. So Catalina, which is the last company that I mentioned in California that's got great name recognition, started in 1907, and when it originated, they were an underwear and sweater company. And you can tell a lot of these swimwear companies that started in the early part of the 1900s were knitwear companies. It's just a natural transition. Um, they did, in 1912, because of the popularity of one-piece swimwear, they decided to focus on doing more of it because it was so comfortable. And uh, in 28, they evolved um, into really trying to capture the Hollywood lifestyle, much like <laughs> what um, Coal of California did. Catalina brand soon became synonymous with silver screen stars like Ginger Rogers, uh, John Crawford, and uh, the biggest, of course, was Marilyn Monroe, who modeled their styles early on. And Catalina also, um, in the 1940s, sponsored the Miss America pageant. So. Um, they had some pretty heavy hitter designers working for them. Some of you may know the name Milo Anderson, but of course Gustav Tessel, who later on in life joined uh, and became partners with Norman Norell. Uh, they were both um, one of many designers that worked for them. But what was cool about them is Catalina experimented with innovative fabrics and surface design, textiles, things like that. And they had uh, running themes for every decade. So um, when I was doing my research, it said um, in the mid-century, they did um, geometric colors, which looked very mid-century modern. And then um, in the 70s, they used lace. In the 80s, metallics, 90s, mesh, and um, et cetera, et cetera. So Catalina is Definitely um, a label that collectors and people who, who love fashionable swimwear look for. Now, we have on the mannequins as well some pretty eccentric bathing caps. This one is all ruffled uh, polyester, and it looks like a 1920s cloche. And then this one is a Trump Loy woman's wig with a bun. It's pretty funny. Um, this, these two are molded rubber with, uh, I mean, I remember these from a childhood. Back in the 60s, I remember people wearing these in the, bath and you could not go into a swimming pool without wearing a, a swimming cap. So the problem is that the rubber disintegrates, and these are pretty hardy. Um, the 1920 swimwear caps that I've had have totally gone kaput. And then we have, um, for the more glamorous, this one actually has a bag, a tote, that has the same uh, iridescent sequin trim. And then this one's a little droopy, but I love how it emulates the 1920s uh, floral cloches. This I think we can correct with a little bit of glue if it doesn't react badly to the rubber. I'll have to look online to see. Anyway, um, and then we have additional swimwear um, from the late 30s, early 40s. This is the most uncomfortable one, which is 100% wool. And how men and women wore these things up until the 40s is beyond my comprehension. You can do research on swimwear and see that bikinis became popular in the 1940s, and uh, thank goodness, because they were not made of wool. We also have this great 
striped with a diagonal, which is so flattering, has um, one shoulder swimsuit, and this one is by uh, Rose Marie Reed, who is also a very, very well-known swimwear designer. Her swimwear actually can command great prices if it has a lot of ornamentation. I've had some that have been encrusted with rhinestones. And this is actually one of my favorites because it's a 1940s bikini. It, the bodice is, the bra is connected with fagoting. And then the shorts not only have this great stencil of a woman surfing, but the back has corsetry lacing. It's very unusual. And of course, when you get into the 1960s, you get these great bikinis, play suits that are playful and adorable. I mean, you could use these shorts just as shorts. And I have three examples of things that are really hard to find. Terry cloth swimwear cover-ups. This is obviously from the 60s as is this. It's kind of a mini dress. But my all-time favorite is this late 60s, early 70s poncho with a matching hat. So <laughs> swimwear is a great category to collect if that's something you want to go into. It's fun, uh, could be useful. If it's not collectible, go ahead and wear it. But um, we also like to carry totes that are good for beach use. And this is very typical of the 50s, 60s, where it's a uh, woven straw with a decorated cotton or linen face. So I think I've covered pretty much everything for now. It's a short episode. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, we will get ready to do another episode for you, hopefully in a few weeks. But um, if you like this episode, please give us a thumbs up. And um, if you haven't subscribed, we have over 100 episodes now banked on YouTube. So we welcome your curiosity and uh, hope to hear from you. And in the meantime, be safe, be well, and stop by if you're in Los Angeles. Thanks so much. Bye. <coughs>